this is the project we're going to do today. I'm calling this one Sunset Serenity. And these are the stamps that were used. These are all Stampscape stamps. The birds were from the Nature Sheet 11. The small, the aisle small is number 395B. Aisle medium 2 is 435D. The leafy branch, this bush right here, is 277F. The two wolves are wolves frolicking, 429A. This part down here is the aisle foreground, 434E. The little sailboat is the small sailboat in the nature sheet 17. The shack is 246B. The tree is from the nature sheet 4. And then the foreground grass was from the nature sheet 9. Okay, I have a quarter sheet of chrome coat paper here. And I'm going to put some temporary adhesive on the back of it just to hold it in place while I uh, do the coloring. I'm going to use some post-it note and I'm going to make a mask at about one inches down from the top like this. And then I'm also going to put a mask for the sun at the horizon. And where I'm going to want it to be is probably about right here. And so that will be about right like that. I'm going to use some Distress Ink. And I'm going to use Antique Linen, Victorian Velvet, Seedless Preserves, and Chipped Sapphire. And I'll start with the antique linen and I'm going to put it on my brush and then I'm going to just tap it off a little bit and put on from the sun. Next, Victorian Velvet. Next, I'll do Seedless Preserves. Okay, I'll go back to some Victorian Velvet. And now I'll go back to the Antique Linen. And now I'll do some Chipped Sapphire. And I want to avoid getting the blue in with the yellow here because I don't want it turning to green. So I'm going to darken up here with some more seedless preserves. And some more antique linen just right around the sun. Okay, now I will remove the mask. And I will move the mask now and cover the sky portion. Next I'll start with is the Victorian Velvet. And I'm going to put some antique linen at the same area where the sun is. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the Victoria Velvet. Okay, I'm going to add some more antique linen to the center. Okay, I'm going to bring some blue in. I'm going to use some broken china. Okay, and then I will come in with some chipped sapphire. OK, 
Okay, and down in here, I'm going to use some Victorian velvet. Okay, I'm going to take my little blending brush that has a round head, and I'm going to take some of my antique linen. I'm going to stamp it off. And just to make sure the head is good and clean, stamp it off. And then I'm going to add a little bit of color to the inside of the sun. And I'll take some more of my antique linen. Okay, I'm going to give this a few minutes of a chance to dry, and we'll be back. Okay, I'm going to use my Stamping Up stamping platform to stamp the images. And uh, I'm also using a Misty Creative Corner so that I can offset this a bit so that my stamps can hang off the side. And I'm going to use some Memento Tuxedo Black and I will ink up the islands. I'm going to give this more of a chance to dry and then I'm going to stamp another layer. Okay, to make these islands in the back a little darker, I'm going to use some Versifying. Okay, and since this is a pigment ink, I'm going to give it a little bit longer of a period to dry. And uh, once it's dry, we'll be back. Okay, and while this is drying, I am going to turn this around to the part I'm going to stamp next. And I will use Memento to ink up the little house. And then I'm going to use the black Versifying to ink up the other stamps. Okay, I'm going to give this quite a while to let all this Versifying ink dry. And as soon as this is good and dry, we'll be back. When I put the heat gun to this, uh, it's warped the paper a bit. So I'm going to put some more of this temporary adhesive on the platform so that I can kind of push this down and hold it down. Being careful not to touch the parts with the uh, pigment ink. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and color the cabin in. I'm going to use some E34, E37, and E39 Copic markers. And I'll start with the lightest color. Now I'll go with the darkest, the E39. Now I'll use some E37, and now go back with my E34. For the roof, I'll use some toner grays. I'll use T3, T4, and T5. Start with some T3, then I'll try some T5. Blend that out with T4, and then the whole thing with T3. Okay, for the windows, I'll use some Y19. Now I'll use a slightly brighter yellow, Y06. Okay, now we'll stamp in the trees. And once again, we'll use some Versifying. Okay, and I think I'm going to stamp this bottom also with Versifying. Okay, now I'm going to allow this to completely dry before I try any more machinations on this because that uh, onyx black ink will just smear all over the place if I try and do anything with this. So I may let this dry overnight and then we'll finish this off in the morning. 
Okay, it's the next day and uh, the ink has dried pretty well. Down here at the bottom where I didn't color it initially, I'm going to use a couple of distressed inks. I'm going to use Hickory Smoke and Black Soot. And I will start with the Hickory Smoke. Okay, and now I'll do some black soot. Okay, now I'm going to use some VersaFine to stamp in the grasses into the foreground. Okay, and now I'll use my white gel pen. This is a Uniball and it's uh, UM-120AC0.1 and I'm going to be careful that I don't touch the grass down here that I just stamped because it's still quite wet. And I want to try some paint markers that I've got. These are an oil-based marker that I got off of uh, Amazon. And I want to try one of the yellow ones to see if I can brighten up these windows a bit in the cabin. And I'm going to add a little bit more white gel pen maybe to Okay, and I'm going to want to restamp the wolves. So I've got it back in my positioner and I'm going to use some memento tuxedo black. Now I want to sign and date it. I'm going to use a 0.1 Copic Multi-Liner. Let's see, and I think I maybe put too much highlights on these, and so I'm going to scratch some of this off here. Okay, and I'm going to re-stamp these smaller islands and uh, this one I'll just stamp up to here because I don't want to stamp over this. Okay and now I'll give everything a chance to dry really well before I spray it with my clear acrylic coating protectant and when I'm finished we'll be back. And here's the result after I finished spraying it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye!